Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. As the Islamic State has expanded control over territory in Iraq and Syria, the demands that the Obama administration take more forceful military action seem to grow louder every day. The gruesome beheadings of two American journalists have only increased such calls. As CNN's Brian Stelter observes, they're not just coming from politicians. But it's not just politicians who are calling for military action. It's a lot of media bigwigs, too. Here's the banner headline on the Huffington Post earlier this week. Media war frenzy like 2003. Now, that's a frightening concept right there. Prominent pro-Iraq war pundits like William Crystal keep popping up on TV, demonstrating once again that advocating for the invasions that contributed to the present chaos does not seem to affect one's standing in corporate media. The discussions about what Obama should do lean heavily towards former military and national security insiders, which inevitably produces a debate not over the wisdom of military strikes, but just over how big a war the United States should be waging. On Meet the Press, NBC correspondent Richard Engel was asked about the White House reluctance to bomb Syria. Richard, what about the president's reluctance to take the fight against ISIS to Syria? Well, I speak to military commanders, I speak to former officials, and they are apoplectic. They think that this is a clear and present danger. They think something needs to be done. Maybe it might make sense to talk to some people who aren't military commanders or government officials. While some media discussions acknowledge that the public is reticent about another war, opposition that at times can be treated as an unfortunate obstacle. But the front page of USA Today tried to tell a very different story about the public mood. Based on the results of one poll, reporter Susan Page says shifts in public opinion could make it easier for President Obama to order more muscular options in striking Islamic State terrorists in Syria and Iraq. But the shift is less than it might seem. The poll Page is talking about comes from the Pew Research Center, and it asks what might sound like a simple question. Do you think the United States does too much, too little, or the right amount in helping solve the world's problems? So if you answered too little, apparently that means you support military strikes. It's worth noting that the majority, 63 percent, say the government does too much or just the right amount. Are these people that want less war, the same amount of war? Well, who knows, since that's not the question being asked. It sounds like USA Today heard what they wanted to hear. And finally, Republican New Jersey Governor Chris Christie traveled to Mexico, and a September 2nd New York Times report called it a chance to demonstrate a level of acumen on foreign policy that has so far eluded him. Christie is consulting with the likes of Henry Kissinger and Condoleezza Rice, apparently because he needs to correct for some foreign policy blunders. What blunders? accurate statements about Israel. According to Times reporter Michael Barbaro, Christie has already committed several foreign policy faux pas this year, by the unforgiving standards of Republican presidential politics anyway. His most important gaffe came in a speech where Christie referred to the West Bank as occupied territories. Barbaro reports that there were audible gasps in the audience, and an apology from Mr. Christie soon followed. But it is the case that the West Bank is under Israeli military occupation. But political reporters treated this as a gaffe, something he wasn't supposed to say. The Times, with its murky reference to the unforgiving standards of GOP politics, seems more interested in perceptions than reality. By bringing up the episode in a piece about how little Christie knows about foreign policy, the paper reinforces the notion that an accurate observation about the world demonstrates a lack of international savvy. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.